Support my content by becoming a patron on patreon.com backslash music. Hi guys, and welcome to a brand new episode of Anime Podcasters. Today, starting with your host, Giant Music, and today I'm also uh, going to be joining you guys on this lovely little adventure regarding the hit anime series, Sham- Samurai... <laughs> Samurai Shampoo. Okay. Yes! Samurai Shampoo. We're doing it. I'm excited. This is a podcast I've wanted to do with you, Q, for a long time. But before we get into it, how have you been, my friend? Doing pretty good. Just working a lot. Got a lot of work to do. Are we looking at 50 to 60 hours a week right now? Uh, I'm looking at like 30, 35 hours a week. Oh, I want. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, I'm doing that too. It's pretty intense. I I, yeah. I agree with you uh, fully that the uh, the work. But I mean, summertime is like when you have to work to make money because school. Anyways, yeah. let's we're get let's get into it. Samurai Shampoo, a amazing series by Watanabe. Uh, one that I recently watched a few months ago that was introduced to me by my roommate. He's like, "Have you watched Samurai Shampoo?" I'm like, "No." He said, "Watch Samurai Shampoo," and I did not regret the decision. Kyo, how did you get into Samurai Shampoo? Because I think you've been a fan of this series for quite a long time. Yeah, um, I believe I told you, or I, I don't remember if I told you about it. Maybe, um, maybe I did. I think I, I kind of recall mentioning it at one point or another because, like, I had seen like uh, trailers for it here and there from uh, Funimation. I think is it Funimation or is it dubbed by somebody else? I, I can't remember. I think it's Funimation. Okay. Or like I saw the trailers for it here and there, and uh, when I went to a convention in Bellingham, there was a a stand that was selling the first four episodes of it, like on DVD. And then I picked it up and I brought it home and I saw it and I liked it a lot. Um, I wasn't thinking that I would like it because like I'm not generally, or at the time I wasn't really a hip hop fan, like in terms of the music, but like once I, uh, once I started watching the ep- uh, first episode, I actually really got into the music and the music surprisingly fits with, uh, uh, the way that they do it. They mix it really, really well. It's, it, it kind of reminds me of a movie called a night's tale. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie before, but, um, it's, it basically does the same concept, except like it in night's tale, they use like modern rock songs in this, uh, fantasy or in the uh like medieval times uh 1400s and whatever uh i have not i haven't heard of the 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 the, the, the piece of media uh but i do want to go back to what you were saying about uh, the music blending into the anime because i completely agree i feel like out of any animes i've i've watched uh, cowboy oh my god cowboy bebop samurai shampoo absolutely blends music and the visual so well uh specifically when they're transitioning from phases or in battle scenes when uh it just shifts and it goes back and forth and you have that little record scratch kind of playing in and out yeah that's a great uh p- piece of uh of like a great use of music right there i i just feel like the way it blends it just kind of gives a uh more of a depth to the anime because when when you have a a, a fight scene with a full uh, uh, or, or Mugen, or sorry, uh, with Mugen, uh, it's just so good because like he he's fighting, and then the music intensifies, and you're you're captivated by that. So I absolutely absolutely love it. Uh, and a fight with Mugen and Jean happens every like what second episode. <laughs> That's one one thing I loved about the beginnings of uh of Samurai Shampoo. I really enjoyed just <laughs> they always like split up in the episode, and at the end they get back together, and then Jean and Mugen are like, okay, now we're gonna settle it. Now now you you're going down now, and oh, it's so great yeah do you do you like the way it's structured where uh, at least the early episodes i remember the first episode though where uh foo is uh, like a part-time tea house worker and like she just basically doesn't really enjoy her job and then mugen and jin show up and kind of take the whole series by storm uh like they're definitely more of the fiery personalities not to say that food doesn't uh do you like the way it's structured at the beginning when the the this trio kind of forms together i kind of noticed that like between these three series like terra resonance cowboy bebop and then uh champloo they the watanabe seems to like uh, experimenting with like creating different kinds of relationships between three essential characters because, like, in uh, Bebop, you have Jet, uh, Spike, and Faye. And, Faye, their, yes. their, and their relationship is vastly, surprisingly different from uh, how it is with, uh, uh, how it is in Shampoo and then also in uh, in uh, Resonance. Um, 
I just like the the fact that he's kind of taking it the same idea. Like it feels like he's taking the same idea and then running with something or like it, it seems like he comes up with a different reason for these three characters to be together like each version is like a, a different uh, point in history of uh like for these types of people yeah i feel like the 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 way he does it he takes the same frame the main mm-hmm. character frame of it and he applies it in different storylines settings and obviously uh the characters have different personalities and there's always okay there's always going to be the fact that it's a tr- a, a trio right just like in Champ- uh, just like in Bo- uh, Bebop or Terror and Residence but these characters are always a bit different so the the bonds is is always going to be different but there's also the fact that a trio one person is always kind of left out where in Zenkino Terror you really have like 9 and 12 being the main fiery ones kind of like in the Shampoo where you have Jean and Mugen really being the fiery ones as well like yeah. there's kind of similarities and differences throughout what I really enjoyed the way it's structured especially in the fir- the first episode what was your thoughts like on the on the first episode just in general I don't know if you can recall much of it because it has been a long time but initial like impressions when you watch the first episode well since we're on that topic i have seen the uh first couple of episodes several times because like i said i had the first four uh episodes on dvd before i saw it on netflix and then finished the whole series um for starters i if anybody's been to my channel you'll see that there's a uh, a video on there called samurai shampoo which is basically basically just a parody of uh it's literally just a an abridged parody of uh champloo and just uh, me kind of kind of playing with voices and uh sadly uh miss uh yuki was not able to join us today but um she was involved with that episode pretty heavily in terms of uh playing foo so i have oh, seen I remember that video yeah That's yeah old how how many years ago did you do that just uh, uh, i think like it's four, two years right? old i think it's two, two years, years old only? i don't remember i think it's like three or four i i whatever okay i don't think it's three years oh. old but uh, I think it. Anyways, the way it starts out is it's pretty. It seems a little similar to what uh, happens in um, uh, Bebop, in the sense that like they're they're kind of all thrown together in this situation and they kind of have to get out of it together. And especially with uh, Champloo, they kind of are. They're kind of all in the same place purely by circumstance, and they're united by a very very strange reason. Uh, for and like Fu decides that she thinks that these two guys can help her find this person and uh it, there's a strange uh feeling of trust between these three characters despite the lack of trust it's it's hard to explain but it is kind of easy to or like I would honestly say that um they're they they surprisingly grow to trust each other despite uh like having no reason to Right, right. Um, I want to say two things. First of all, I think uh, like it's this finding this samurai that smells of sunflower. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's what it's, this goal ties them all together. And since the since this goal ties them together, as they travel together and have more adventures, because just like uh, Bebop, this anime is very episodic and has little to no connective tissue between episodes. There are. I, I, few, I wouldn't say that. I would say it's more so that. Or I would say it's not as episodic. I would say that like um, the situations they come into are kind of episodic. There's always a yeah. There's always a different goal per episode, but the overarching goal is still the same. Like Fu's goal doesn't change. Mm, okay, fair. But what? Fair. But uh, like I'll I'll let you get back in just a second. I'm just saying like uh, it's very clear that they're still on the same journey. Yes, I think actually that's a, no. You're 100 percent correct. I think that's a, a great way to put it. Um, it, it's through these different adventures that he goes through, like to reach this common goal. Well, this this goal, whatever, however you want to put it, uh, that trust and confidence and humor uh, develops. The and co-host where, at least uh, has to appear once in every episode, Jaden. You know this. Get out of here! Oh, hot shot. What's up? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> He just felt like crashing the podcast for a minute there. It's all good. Hotshot uh, came in real quick. I hope you're doing well, buddy. <laughs> I'm just going to edit there's, you out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> there's no latch on my door, so I can't <laughs> keep him from walking in here. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Sorry, uh, what were you but, saying? 
No, of course, lo- of course. You lost uh, me a little halfway there because he just jumped in and said timeout, like, off screen there. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, what I was trying to say is that uh, this common goal and the adventures they go through, they develop more of an affinity for one another through humor and trust and everything. Like, we, we see there's moments where uh, Fu and Jean are laughing at Mugen. Like, there's the one episode where Mugen doesn't know how to – was it he doesn't know how to write or doesn't know how to read properly? He doesn't know how to read. And he gets yeah. caught by that uh, grammar. And, like, Jean and, and Fu are like, are you serious like, you can't read you know <laughs> like stuff like that like it, it's cheeky and it's funny and and, and i really yeah. uh, appreciate it um but going back to episode one another thing i really enjoyed is like the intro scene is like they're about to get executed and you're like how did we get here and then it rewinds all the way back to the beginning i yeah. really like the structure the narrative structure there because it really provides a uh, a good way to like put the listener in suspense like what's going on why are they there what's going on wait okay now it's like a time machine where we're, we're going future trunks on this one um, yeah and, and we don't know what's going on so that, that's a great thing do you enjoy that when anime is able to like place a scene that's in the future and then rewind back to the past and explain how it leads that like w- what about that do you like or not like um i'm kind of half and half on it um I think there are some shows that pull that off really well. I was more so just like, uh, or I think that the reason that it works here is because um, there's there's so few answers and there's no uh, there's nothing apparent right away. You're just kind of thrown into this, uh, kind of thrown into the situation, kind of like how they are. They were just kind of minding their own business, and then uh, things just kind of escalated <laughs> escalated when the two of them met. And uh, mm-hmm. I think the best, I think. Uh, I think the best way to describe it is that um, it's all or like just the way that they tell the story. It's kind of pure coincidence that they're all there at the same time. Coincidence is such a strong factor in this anime. Yeah, because they get separated and they, they, they get back together. And it's like you somehow ran into me in this random street of this random town at the beginning yeah. of the episode. We were set like it's it's so great. I, I really appreciate like the randomness of this anime. Mm-hmm. Um I want to start maybe talking about our, our three main characters because I really feel it's like it's also or before you yeah. go uh, go on there or uh, for sure I think it's kind of funny because like back then there wasn't nearly as much uh, uh, what's the word uh, civil civilization it was uh, there was a lot more wilderness there was a little more uh, it, it was a little harder to find towns back then like it's it's kind of funny that they still somehow to meet back together in such a large country when they could have gone in any given direction and they probably wouldn't have ever seen each other again, but they somehow always seem to manage to get back together. I think that's kind of, or I don't know if that's like a, an intentional joke or not, but like, it seems like it, it feels intentional on behalf of the writers, but like it, or like they're just so baffled by the fact that they always seem to get back together one way or another. No, absolutely. Um, what I wanted to say th- too is that regarding the country. Like, I, there was one episode where there was, it started out with a rap, and it just it, it explained like where have we been so far, and they travel quite a lot and they really go from town to town to town oh i hear this one rumor here i think if you want to find him go over there so it's very like adventurous this, this sense of adventure is, is is like woven into the plot very strongly mm-hmm. just because we don't know where this samurai uh that smells of sunflower is we just we're gonna go over here and if it happens to be there cool you know we don't have google we only have our swords and our sandals that we walk with you know what i mean mm-hmm. so uh, with that being said, uh, may I move on to Mugen, where uh, our our first character Mugen is my favorite. I gotta start. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, Mugen, I absolutely loved. He is just like he is like what like uh, what's the word to describe it? Like he's kind of a pirate, but now he's like what like a vagabond. He doesn't really live anywhere. Walks around. Uh, I wouldn't even say he's like a mercenary or anything, but like you know, super rude. He's super a vulgar. he's a. Uh... I was gonna I was gonna say wanderer, but I think there was another word I'm looking for. But or oh, that's right, drifter, 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 drifter was a good way. Yeah, uh, I felt like a good way to describe his character was anti-hero because yes, he is a hero, but he's got such a like not a crappy personality, but he's just so rude and temperamental. Just like he's not like you know he he's not uh, Naruto, he's not Goku, he's mm-hmm. very much the opposite with his like bad mood and everything. What do you think? I think uh, the the thing that makes Mugen so intriguing is the fact that um, he's very uh, unorthodox uh, as far as uh, protagonists go. 
And quite frankly, like he, he's kind of in the same vein as Spike in the sense that like the series is not about him, but he's kind of like the flag uh, flagship character that everybody thinks of when they think of, you know, this series. Um, mm-hmm. I think the I really like the fact that he's so unconventional, his uh, his rudeness, his erratic behavior and like his uh he doesn't seem to have an overall goal. I mean, we kind of get to know him uh slowly more and more as the show goes on cuz there's like uh or there was that one episode where we kind of uh look into his past and we see kind of why he left his uh left his homeland and all that. Um <clears throat> I also really liked that uh he seems very uh su- or like superficially he seems very one noted he's very uh crazy he's very unpredictable and that's kind of uh yes. i think that's kind of what draws people to him is the fact that he's so he's so not regular he's so much uh he's so much like everything that you know is not good to have in a friend but you're just so intrigued by him Yes. Oh, that is such a good way to put it. Uh, another thing I really liked about him was how how competitive he is, and how he's like, <laughs> I'll take on anyone. I don't. Yeah, he care he who will switch are. from uh or like like I said, he has no real overarching goal. He kind of <laughs> he kind of lives moment to moment, like or even heck, like second to second. He'll have one goal, and then next thing you know, he could be or like he could be hungry one moment, and then the next moment he could be horny. You know, <laughs> like. <laughs> It just changes oh God, out of yeah. nowhere. It's so random, and I, I, I really enjoy how like it just really you never know what to expect. And um, I don't know why, but I really appreciate this in a character where like um, like this the word authority like absolutely pisses him off. Like he doesn't <laughs> t- he doesn't take anything from anyone. You yeah. know what I mean? Mugen, it's Mugen's way or it's the highway, and it's this yeah. hard headedness that I, I just really appreciate in him. Uh, it's uh, it's great because he's like the way he is with uh, Gina at the beginning. He's super hard headed. Like <laughs> he finally accepts him with like as a comrade, but like uh, with the promises at the end of this, like we'll fight each other. Like I'll be your friend for now, but at the end, like I will put a sword through your neck. Like it's crazy. It's 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 so chaotic, but yeah, just really really fun to watch. What or that that so I guess that transitions into talking about Gene then doesn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I also I wanted to talk about their fighting styles too at the end, but we can we can, let's go do all the characters and we'll talk about fighting styles at the end. Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. All right, go ahead with Gene. What what are, what are your thoughts on Gene? Um, I really like how Gene is literally the exact opposite. Like all three of these characters are opposites to each other. Uh, especially mm-hmm. Fu. Like Fu is an opposite to the both of to both of these characters like she's not really a fighter she's not uh she's not particularly like skilled in anything she's just kind of a a regular every person but um or yeah sorry i'll have to <laughs> bring her up later my bad um no worries gene uh gene is the stereotypical image of what a samurai is like in in japan it's a mm. it's a dignified uh, warrior who has a strong sense of honor and completely lives by his own code, or not by his own code. He lives strictly by the code of the sword, basically. And I like how he's in exact contrast to uh, Mugen in that sense, because Mugen is just like, I'll do whatever I want whenever I feel like it. Because he, he literally works the way that a child would. Like, a child would immediately just, like, Children, children kind of change their change their mind on a dime, and they don't, and even they don't understand it. But uh, Gene is very uh, reserved. He's very quiet. He's 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 also very observant. Whereas like Mugen is not nearly as ex- observant. Like I can go on and on saying like how exactly different these characters are. But the interesting part about them is the fact that the two of them strangely can get along. But at the same time, there's this underlying uh, feeling that they have to fight each other simply because they are so different. Right. Uh, I have a one question before I give like what I think of, uh, yeah. of G. I have one question for you before I do that. Um, when they were like designing the personalities, like just coming out with these characters, specifically Mugen and Jean, mm-hmm. do you think it was intentional how much of a contrast there was going to be between the two? Do you think that like that was like pre-planned, or do you think it just kind of happened? I think absolutely it was planned. It's it it. it it makes so much sense for it to not, uh, or it makes too much sense for it to not be planned, you know? Right, right, right. 
Like, it seems that uh, the entire purpose of these characters is how different they are, but how they're all coming together for some simple reason that doesn't even technically matter to the two of them. And they're just kind of doing what... uh, they're, They're just kind of both... They're both kind of lost in their way. They don't have a... The two of them don't have a goal, but Fu has a goal, and maybe that's what uh, connects the three of them together, is that they all admire each other in a certain way. Yes. Uh, I really wanted to like highlight uh, his common collectedness. Um, what, I just As a character, he's so... like I, I don't remember once in the series where he loses his cool. Like, he's yeah. just... He's always, like, just not like a flat line, but, like, very, very calm, very, like... In in his head, where he, he's 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 not gonna lose his his temper is never gonna go off the handle. Yeah. Um. Also, I really enjoy like when it comes to his honor and wanted to to do the right thing. Anyone who uses like martial arts in a way to what's the word I'm looking for to like damage or oppress people, like mm-hmm. he doesn't stand for that, and it, it shows that he has like a, a a a strong strong morale. Uh, as a character, and the other thing I really enjoyed, like how Mugen and uh, Mugen and uh, Fu are more of a uh, extroverts and he more introverted, and when uh, mm. Mugen and uh, and Fu are always like making jokes, like he, he sometimes he doesn't even reply with words. He's just kind of like <sighs> he kind of sighs and just kind yeah. of looks at them half, you know. And that's like I don't know, like some anime characters don't need to talk, and that's completely fine. I just I really like that. Yeah. Like so he does kind of have, have a he does kind of have the quality that you you seem to always kind of know what he's thinking just by looking at his expression, even though his expression is like almost 100 percent of the time the same expression. Yes. Oh, my God. Like you kind so of read I- you kind of read him the same way that you read Darth Vader. Like there was a teacher in high school who told me that uh, Darth Vader is one of the greatest characters in cinema because, or the most expressive character in cinema, because you can tell exactly what he's thinking without any form of like actual expression. It's like completely Facial expression. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, I think it's interesting that it kind of applies to a character who can express, but he doesn't really have to because you can kind of you kind of get his character just by looking at him. And I don't think that makes him predictable necessarily, but that makes him. Uh, or like I guess it makes him easy to read, but that doesn't make him uninteresting. It's he's interesting because like we we want to know a little bit more about him. We want to know his pers or like uh him as a person as opposed to like uh the sort of facade that he's putting over himself. No, absolutely. I think that's a really good way to put it. Uh, it's like. It, there's a wall, but it's like almost like a transparent wall. I, I mean, there's something there, like blocking it, but you can still tell what there is on the other side. Is what is yeah. the point I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I want to move on to Fua. If you had uh, anything else to say, no, yeah, that's that. That's about it. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, I, I, you know who Fu is? Hmm. Fu is is a more likable Lisa, in my opinion, from Zenki no Terror. Oh, Lisa. Yeah, Lisa from Zenkino Terror. Because okay. she's so, like... I can, I can not, see what you're talking not, about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she's always, like, accident-prone and uh, get, gets lost or gets hurt or gets captured or, you know, and, and then it's always, like, Mugen and Jean being like, all right, uh, let's go for round number three here. Like, there's always something, like... <laughs> Not wrong, but just something like I mean, it's good because it it gives more to the story and to like discuss and right. to, like what's going to happen now. Um, but it, it's always her that kind of like sparks the the uh, commotion because oh, yeah. let's go get her, uh, let's go save her. Um, I also think that another good word to describe her is trusting because you know she's never met these guys before, and you know what, you two are going to be my personal bodyguards. Like, <laughs> uh, okay, sure. Uh, but yeah. So, what are your thoughts though? Um, I like, or like, I think the best way to describe her, like, you kind of said it already, but I'll, I I think I'll, like, explain it a little more from, like, what I see. I think what I see is that, um, she always seems to be, she seems to be that damsel in distress character, but she never, it never feels like she's completely out of control. She's always got, like, or she's always thinking of a way to get out of the situation. Uh, she's never, she's never really helpless. Like, she's not gonna just sit sit there and wait for the guys to come save her she'll try and find a way for herself to uh to get herself out of the situation or she'll improvise somehow right. she she always seems to have a she always seems to have like a contingency like she tries to 
she tries to keep herself afloat uh, by herself, and it's not yeah, I, I it's not add, uh, well, it's not so much being helpless. It's just that like she's not she doesn't have any skills that uh, prevent her from being captured or anything. Well, she's not a fighter, and on yeah, exactly. And on top of that, she's like for one, she's a woman in feudal Japan. Like women didn't uh, didn't get the chance to to fight really unless you were like a uh, unless you were a kunoichi, in which case you would be like undercover in a uh like as like a a royal person who's kind of hiding in plain sight but that's not also kind of just not Fu's personality she's not really that type of person she's she's kind of supposed to be the the every the every guy in a sense despite ju- you know just being a lady yeah 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 i have i have two two points real quick yeah um I think you describe describing her always wanting to try to figure a way out of the situation and just like you know she's not helpless. Uh, mm-hmm. Lisa felt way more helpless in my opinion. I don't. I, I want to stray away from Lisa though. The reason why I think yeah. she's more likable is because of those reasons. Because she tries at least. Yeah. She goes for it. You know that makes her very way more likable in my in my opinion. And the other yeah. thing I just remembered like. Wasn't she like a teenager? Isn't she like like 14, 15 years uh, old? So we she's gotta like, cut her some slack here. She's like she's, she's sixteen, maybe or I think she's I don't think she's an adult or uh I guess she would no, be a young adult. Oh well, definitely a teenager. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you got the so, wiki open, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, let me look at the wiki. Uh, <laughs> uh fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen years so, old. I guess yeah. at that point she would be considered a legal adult then. Oh really? Well, well, like in in Japan, you're you're technically considered an adult by the time you're like 13, 14. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it's it's a little scary. <laughs> that, that I mean, dude, dude I was barely day. making my own lunches when I was thirteen. <laughs> dude, I I was not doing good in math at thirteen. Anyway, <laughs> I want to go. I want to go to the fighting styles of our two bodyguards here because yeah. These are, these, these, Before we jump oh. into that, can we just talk about yeah. like quickly drop? A mention about that uh afro samurai versus mugen live action video that somebody made oh my god the recent one that came on social media yeah yeah exactly yes yes oh the one you post yes i absolutely love that i uh, you know what uh tell me your thoughts i'm gonna go find the name and shout these people out because it's it's really good yeah so go, go ahead and give your thoughts here oh on uh the video yeah, yeah yeah i'm gonna go find the name and shout them out while you do that oh um well, it's basically just these guys who uh, use some very basic special effects. Uh, they got two guys in the woods, and they literally just filmed these people uh, doing a fight between these two different anime characters. Uh, one was Afro Samurai from, well, Afro Samurai. And then on top of that, there was Mugen, who we were talking about earlier. And it is really well choreographed. I don't want to talk too much about it. But because, like, so much of it is just, like, enjoying the, uh, like, the way that they choreographed the fight, the way that they uh, made it all work. The actors look perfect for their parts. Like, it's it's almost as if they're just, like, literally coming right out of the anime. It is it is amazing. Yeah, the, the page is called Team Red Pro, and uh, as of we were recording this, they are, they have released episode two. Oh, there's a second one. Yeah, they released episode two, July 2nd. Yeah. So... Go check that out. Uh, I'm absolutely going to watch that after the podcast. Yeah, but I got to sit down one, and watch them one after so the well other put. one. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's, it was When you posted that, I was like, well, okay, that's just like some meme or something. And I, oh, whoa, okay, okay. Uh, now, I'm in, now I'm intrigued. So, yeah. absolutely a great uh, great piece of content right there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I want to go to, to, to Mugen here. Uh, so, his fighting style, you, you know who he made me think of a little bit? He, huh. I, 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 hate, I hate to say it, but Drunk Lee. Who? Drunk Lee. Drunk Lee. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't. I don't really see that. No. <laughs> no, he's so unorthodox. You don't know where he's coming. You don't know where he's gonna jump from. You don't know. Like he's a little bit. Like not entirely. Like I. I you. You must see what I'm saying, though. Come on. <laughs> I t- I. I kind of get what you're saying, but I don't. Like unpredictable, I don't unorthodox. <laughs> A little bit, Kyo. Like, homie, he's I'm great getting, I'm getting your, uh, I'm getting your idea. I'm just saying that I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, he's like he's breakdancing almost. Like, uh, it, yeah, I feel, was, I feel like that so was the, great. I feel like that in particular was the intention for like when they were like designing his, uh, you know, his move set. You know. No, definitely. I think, I think it's, uh, it, it's that's gotta be it. Um, 
Oh, just he is just crazy. Like he's jumping around, he's slicing that, he's going here, left, right. Oh, where is he now? Oh, behind you, you're dead already. Um, oh, it was just such a great, great fighting style that I, I really lo love from uh, from Mugen. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's just it's so cool. It's it's I can't get over it because w when you think of Gene, uh, he's so like the opposite. Even in his fighting style, he's very like you know I was trained by my sensei in this dojo and da 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 da. Mugen's like oh I'm just gonna swing for the left. Like why not? Like, yeah. <laughs> That that drives my point home even more. Like they're they're supposed to be opposites, all all three of them, <laughs> all the way through, all yeah, the way through. Exactly. That's called theming, oh. my friend. That's called theming. Theming. Theme. Theming. Theme. Yes. Theming. Huh? I didn't even know. Uh, I didn't even know that was a thing. But that's that's really cool. Um, what are some? Uh, uh, is there anything else you want to say about the fighting style? Uh, or because uh, I have other things I want to uh, ask you. Uh, no, I think you pretty much covered it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um. Favorite, maybe like oh yeah, favorite episode and like standout moments in the series for you that you really really enjoyed. <laughs> um, easily my favorite episode is one that has nothing to do with the actual story. It's the episode where uh, they start a fire in a weed field and they all get high. <laughs> oh my god, yes, that's the one. That's the one where Mugen gets they, they all they all get caught at that yeah. like uh, the border <laughs> thing, and then <laughs> and then like Mugen. Mugen's like, if you come back before the uh, end of the day, and then there's that jogger, that stupid jogger who's yeah. like, brings everyone's hopes. He's like, oh, I'm just going for a stroll. Oh my god! And they get super high <laughs> yeah. because of the. Oh, that was so great. And it's he was like, the Are you crazy. We it's the most die? like. <laughs> it's the most like a. Uh, uh, it's the most like odd detour that they take off of the the actual story, just to make this like mm -hmm. short little episode about. Basically, just Mugen ending up in a field getting high. It's just so, <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing how they worked that in. Like I was not ready for that surprise ending. The ending is a, a it, it's an amazing twist. Like you guys would would not have seen it coming if you've seen it the first time. <laughs> no, it's really it, it's just oh, it was so funny. I, I think one of my favorite episodes was uh, like uh, it, it's more towards the end where uh, Gene Fu and Mugen. They get to a spot and like the guy's like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna dig. We're looking. I forget what they were looking for. And then everyone's like, it's like a two part I think. And then everyone ends up being zombies. And he and then the guy's like, not really part of the uh, the family that he says that he's a part of. It's like this big meme uh, at the end where it, it was all a joke and like. That for days and days they like they just shovel and shovel and shovel and nothing ever really happens and it's like <laughs> the biggest waste of time in the entire series <laughs> and everyone's like like everyone's like why are we here right now and like they, they don't even believe they're in the year that they're in like yeah th these people are so dis disconnected from reality and it it was just a really funny episode to me like that one was so hilarious yeah oh man <laughs> um I want to maybe talk uh, more towards the end of the series. Actually, the, the complete end of the series. Actually, no. Ac I want to go to one thing. Hmm. Uh, go ahead. Yo, go ahead. I was going to say, I think a good point to, to touch up on is the uh, the fact, like, how much of it is... Uh, some of it is surprisingly historically accurate, uh, believe it or not. Like... Uh, can you elaborate? Yeah. Well, like, uh, there's the episode where... Um, where they have that baseball game, and then these Americans oh arrive on God, shore. Oh, my yes. That, that's not... 100% true but like that sort of event is relatively similar to what did in fact happen when um America uh first visited uh Japan. I see what you mean. I see what you yeah. mean. Yeah. Like the, that's I, one that that's one example episode. but on top of that there was uh there's also that episode where that uh one man made his journey there from uh I think it was from Russia or something like that and like it it was because, er, and it turned out that the guy was gay, and he realized that uh, Japan actually kind of, sort of encouraged uh, like homosexuality around that time period, and that that is a that is also well, one hundred percent true. Like that's, uh, or like there there are a couple of other cultures that believe that um, warriors, like say for example, Romans. I think it was Romans. I can't remember if it was Romans or Greeks, but one of the two was like their their gladiators or their uh, armies would engage in, in sex with each other uh, to create mm. a stronger bond with each other when they were going out onto the battlefield or like before no, they went I, out, before they went out, not like on, <laughs> on the battlefield. I mean, not the act, obviously they not high. And then no, no, yeah. 
No. <laughs> quite, quite, quite the storyline. Um, I was gonna say, uh, what did you think about? I, I feel like this is like a beginning of podcast question, but still, um, the whole setup with the they want to find this samurai that smells of sunflowers. Like that's a point I really want to like touch base with. Um, uh, and everything they go through to get to that point. Uh, like, what did you think of that goal? Like, why is it? Why was it so important and everything and the way it was presented? Like, what did you think of that? Um, you'll have to refresh my memory on the ending because, as I recall, wasn't it that she was going out to find her father? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I thought it was, a uh, kind of surprising. I thought it was just like, a fr- or like when I first saw it, I thought it was just like, maybe it's just an old friend that she, uh, longed to see from childhood or something like that. There was this, maybe there was this, uh, like young adult at the time when she was a very young child and she like grew attached to him because like maybe she never really had parents or something like I think the idea was that uh she was an orphan and like uh believe it or not it it did happen a lot back then like there were plenty of parents who just couldn't uh handle taking care of children at the time like it, it's bad now but like imagine how it was back then like you can barely make uh some people could just barely make a living uh back in those days like there was no connection between towns the only way to get from one place to another was to basically walk there or ride there like <clears throat> so anyway i guess what i'm trying to say there is like it's kind of set it's kind, it was kind of sad to see uh fu go all this way and for it to end up kind of meaning really nothing but in the end i think the the real lesson is that like life is not really about the uh uh life is not about the end goal it's the journey that we're making with uh people that we care about and that we meet along the way and it's uh it's really just kind of about the about the people around you as opposed to the way that uh life is supposed to end or in this case how the journey is supposed to end right right right, right. i i really like want to touch on what like the ending itself yeah uh was such a like i really thought like mugen and jean were gonna like pass away but i okay spoiler alert like massive yeah. spoiler alert guys like at this point sorry yeah i um, mean i mean at this point i assume that whenever somebody jumps onto this podcast they're kind of ready for us to spoil crap like immediately <laughs> yeah 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 fair enough um but really with the gene like trying to get rid of I th- what was the name of that character it was like i don't remember it was just like a really it was a really strong like the assassin gentleman. yeah the assassin guy like he was ordered to kill uh, Fu's father, and then Jean and Jean and uh, and Mugen fight him at the at the like at the town before getting to the island, and that whole thing, you know, they aren't able to do it. So Mugen's like, okay, well, I'm gonna go on the boat, and then he's like, he get it's a struggle because he kills off the one brother, yeah, and then he gets on the island, and it's like it's a whole struggle, and everyone, yeah, uh, and it, it, it related back to the whole ship episode too, where like uh, the ship that he like got on, like the guy was angry at him. For that reason, I I mean, the, the, a lot of details are missing here. I'm sorry, I haven't seen the, ep- yeah. the episodes recently, but at the same time, um, there there was like there is like connective tissue still present, and I really love how at the end, uh, thank you Watanabe, thank you so much because you know <laughs> you killed nine and twelve, and that really like you know emotional <laughs> scars are still gonna be there for the rest of my life. Thank you so much. Let's for not, not even get started on the ending of Bebop, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude yeah that one too i didn't want to mention it but yes i'll serve you with that um like thank you thank you for not killing all the characters yeah. that's appreciated yeah right <laughs> it and was like, it was really, really, really nice like, to see like uh jane and mugen uh like realize that they've actually kind of grown a connection to foo and that they're willing to like sacrifice themselves for the goal of this person that they technically didn't really even know all that well you know De- definitely but i feel like it brought meaning to like everything they, they yeah they, they were doing they had like some, it was oh, a very oh, nice feel good it was right a now. very nice way to like cap off a, a very good show you know right and uh, the ending like really left it like open-ended where like you could have a season two of this i don't think we ever will i wish we did but at the same how time, many episodes like, were there 24 i think 25 26 yeah that that would be technically two seasons yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean i i would like a third yeah season. yeah sorry uh, e- e- either show. way like um, i i totally get what you're saying mm-hmm. and i really wonder like what fu was gonna do after that because okay she found her dad dad's dead 
What are you doing now? No, Gene can go back to the prostitute that he, like, uh, let escape. <laughs> and then Fu had that, like, romantic interest with that other girl that, like, he, like, defeated all those bad guys for. And then she kind of, like, let him out to dry. Like, the, the these guys have, like, other things, like, other ventures to go on. I kind of don't know what Fu's going to do now. What, what do you think? What did you think about that setup? Um, I like the idea of just leaving things open-ended, like, uh, for me, in this case, I think that it's a good thing Good thing to leave things open-ended in the sense that, um, uh, <clears throat> in, the, in the sense that, like, if you, you just, if you just leave things open, that doesn't really give anything bad, um, that doesn't give, uh, give way to anything bad or good, it just kind of leaves, uh, leaves things to be just open, and that's just kind of the way life is, life doesn't really have a... Life doesn't really have like a good or bad uh, ending, you know. It's kind of just open to how other people see it. Right. All right. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to maybe highlight one more character that I really enjoyed. Okay. Uh, specifically, Sarah. Do you remember her? Not very well. The musician. Despite. Uh... The musician lady, and then Fu gave her gene basically to help her find her son. Uh, oh but yeah! Then it turned out, yeah, yeah. What'd you think of her? Uh, I honestly don't remember that character very well. Th- the characters I remember best are easily those three, and uh, like oh, I, I don't or like I get what you were saying when you said that things were kind of episodic in the sense that like these characters don't really matter like a f- like a few episodes later, really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like in in that sense, I do agree that this is kind of a. Uh, that it kind yeah, of is yeah, episodic to- in that sense. I totally get it. I I really liked her because she was like I think she was blind or something, but she was like a super strong fighter and she like lied and everything. There was a lot of like tension in that episode that I really liked with her and Mugen at the end. Mugen I think manages to defeat her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the the other episode I wanted to highlight that it was two episodes back to back. It was the whole boat uh, raid. Uh, oh yeah, Mugen gets like uh, backstabbed and then the ship explodes and then like everyone thinks Mugen dies and everything. Yeah, and then it turns out these people knew Mugen from the past and everything. It was that that was another really great episode that I really enjoyed. Did you do you have any recollection from that episode? Um, I remember a little of it. Um, I don't. <laughs> I I remember a little about it. It that's the episode where like we kind of get a look into uh, like Mugen's life before he met uh, Fu and exactly. Jean. Okay, exactly. Yeah, it it kind of reminds me of uh, a, what was it? There was like there's I think it's an episode in Avatar where like uh we see or I can't remember where where it happened or what it was, but it was like it was this this one character you kind of get a glimpse into their past and what they used to be like, and then but like at the same time you later find out oh yeah this is the reason they left in the first place. So it kind of right, showed. Right, right. So like, I feel like the whole episode's lesson in the end was like, uh, remember where you came from, but don't let, uh, but don't let the past uh, hold you down. You know. Right. I see what you mean. Like, it's okay to um, have nostalgia, but for uh, your le- for your past to control you, it's not it's not healthy. Right. Uh, I think Sasuke should take a page out of that book. Oh, oh if sorry, only. wrong anime. <laughs> if only, right? Um. Okay. Uh. Let's uh, let's start getting to final thoughts here uh, before we uh, plug our way our stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, was there anything else? Any le- what, a final topic before final thoughts? Um, if you guys like samurai shampoo, you might like my samurai shampoo video because it was kind of funny. It was great. I really <laughs> I remember that. Like we should we should do another one. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm down. So. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll go with my final thoughts. Um, so Samurai Champloo for me was a great uh show. I just really enjoyed it overall. The musical element, the musical scoring was great. Oh yeah, the character, the trio specifically, very strong character development. Uh, very action packed, very adventurous, humorous. It really like uh everything that I wanted in an anime. It really possessed it. So it's a solid, solid pick that cracks my top ten for sure. Yeah. Uh, Definitely recommend it if you want to. Wa- if you haven't watched it yet, you're completely spoiled. But you should still watch it. Uh, and uh, another thing I wanted to say is, uh, I just as an anime fan myself, my goal is to watch all of Watanabe series. Mm-hmm. So I've seen Bebop, I've seen Zanki no Terror, I've seen Samurai Champloo. I'm currently watching Space Dandy, uh, which is a really good one. It's a. It's actually. It's really funny. It's way more comedic. Um, it's it's got a trio set up too. Um, and uh, you know the currency in Cowboy Bebop is Wulongs. Yeah. 
It's the same currency in uh, Space Dandy. <laughs> they also use Wulongs. Oh, boy. So, but Watanabe is just a genius when it comes to this. He's a master. Uh, so, I absolutely love it. I absolutely enjoyed this anime, and I wish there were more episodes. Uh, maybe we'll get a Netflix live action someday. What, uh, what do you think, Kyo? What was that? Maybe we'll get a Netflix live action one day. What do you think? Oh, boy. I don't know. We'll go We'll go into that when we talk about Kakegirori Season 2. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. All right, uh, go ahead with your final thoughts. Uh, honestly, if you guys haven't seen Samurai Champloo, definitely check it out. It's a really good, very strong, uh, emotionally strong series. It's very character-driven. Honest, honestly, if you haven't seen it yet, you really are missing out on some really good quality anime. Uh, definitely add it to your watch list and give it a chance to check it out. I think it's still on uh, Netflix. If it's not on Netflix, definitely give it a shot on uh, Funimation now. Definitely support those streaming platforms. Yeah. Uh, it's what it's what the original artists want because that's how they sustain themselves mm-hmm. uh, financially. All right. So uh, thank you very much, Kyo. Uh, I also want to do a quick uh, point here because we're talking about live action stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyo and I did a Cowboy Bebop live action podcast uh, before episode one was done and I've uh, gotten like I think one comment but still like just for the one commenter uh, for asking for the next one uh, I was I'm always keeping an eye out on the news I I try to see if there's anything happening and right now <clears throat> sorry if we were to do a podcast right now with all the articles I've gathered we'd maybe have enough material for like 15 minutes there's nothing big that really happened so yeah. I think the next time we'll do a podcast for that will be when the trailer drops or if something major develops. Yeah, we want to have like a comes out. We want to have like enough information to fill like at least 50 minutes. Like Definitely. Yeah, like if not an hour, like at least 50 minutes. Like that's our minimum uh preference for like when we do one of these, but uh be patient guys. We're trying to be patient ourselves cuz we're literally waiting on these articles about as much as you are. So Exactly. Well said, Kyo. Um, so go ahead. Uh, who does the armor for anime podcast? <laughs> <laughs> who draws my face twice a week? That would be that would be me on occasion. <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> no, but go ahead. Plug everything. Okay. Uh, again, check out my Samurai Shampoo video. It's on my YouTube channel at GoPro Kyo. Um, I recently got a new Twitter handle. My new Twitter handle is GoPro Kyo with uh zeros and uh if you guys can't and uh so that's basically where uh where my new twitter is just in case you guys were wondering where i went i had to clear it out because of a security breach but uh anyways beyond that um definitely keep yeah uh beyond that guys keep a lookout for some of my new content i am working on uh some more abridged videos it's just taking a lot of time with other stuff going on uh going on in my life but Anyway, I'm going to move it over to Jayanne, and we'll close this off. Okay, perfect. So, uh, for myself, uh, you can obviously follow me on Twitter at Giant Music. Uh, Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Giant Music. Uh, I recently updated my website, so giantmusic.com. If you have any uh, audio projects you want me to be a, uh, a part of, uh, I can do composition, sound design, yeah. mixing, mastering, recording, rapping, whatever you need musically. Uh, I'm I'm here. I can uh, provide that with a, a very good competitive price. And uh, finally, if you want more any podcasters in your life, first of all, you can do you can uh, subscribe to the podcast on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud. I know I'm missing one, but you know, like we're everywhere on YouTube. Like you subscribe to the channel youtubecom forward slash Giant Music. I, that I, is the best way to uh, figure find us. And uh, this is uh, episode 61 of the podcast. Uh, FYI, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, at this point in time we have not recorded it, but we did a clip show uh, for episode 60, which we're going to be recorded. It's like our favorite moments uh, from uh, the last 59 episodes uh, at this uh this podcast is going is going crazy i think we recently hit 5,000 plays yeah, yeah. Uh, on uh, I, uh, itunes and spotify so thank you all for the support uh leave us a review five star review it always helps uh that's gonna be everything uh next episode will be with hotshot i promise uh <laughs> is hotshot around does he want to say anything before we go uh and uh and leave he's probably on the toilet right now all right hotshot uh, hopefully you'll be done that by the time we record the next episode. No, I'm kidding. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Anime Podcasters. Bye, guys. Bye.